And you know what God showed me? So all those things that he was sharing with me was an ungrateful spirit that was hitting my life in light of the blessing that comes. And I went to the dictionary, and the dictionary literally said the word ungrateful. It literally means forgetfulness. Isn't it amazing how many Christians get in a, a difficult situation and they forget all the things that God ever did for them in the past? They forget to speak to themselves in Psalms. Or as they're taught today in the church world today, that you don't need to read the Old Testament because it's all done away and everything's all there. And yet the New Testament tells you, commands you to speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. And everybody said amen. I also recognized out there that the Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to call upon his name. I also looked at the life of David. Isn't it amazing? Many believers have sought the Lord, and the Bible says I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and it says, and he delivered me, come on, from all my fears. And yet many believers have not experienced that deliverance. Many believers are still living in their fears. And, you know, here's a perfect example of a believer taking a verse out of context, a promise, and not meeting the conditions. Let me just state this because I felt the brakes went on a moment ago about the Old Testament. Let me tell you, my New Testament from the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 10 teaches me the five sins that were examples that happened in the land of Canaan that God doesn't want you to repeat the same five. And how are you going to know? And he said, these are examples for you that you don't make the same mistakes. So if you don't know what the mistakes are because you have never read what it said over there, then how are you, you going to be warned so you don't make the same mistake? And I'm not going to get into it, but one of the mistakes was neither murmur ye as they murmur and were destroyed by the destroyer. Why? Because murmuring is an invitation for the demonic to come into your life, to steal from your life, to paralyze your life, to destroy your life. Good preaching, Pastor Rick. You're doing good. Okay, now you're ready. This is not in the book, but listen what I've learned from them. Ingratitude is a spiritual abortion to every good thing that God has for your life. Isn't it amazing in, in, in the Bible, Philippians chapter 2, it says, Neither murmur, uh, no, 1 Corinthians 10 was neither murmur as they murmur and were destroyed at the store. But he says, do all things. Everybody say all things. What does that mean? Love your wife, love your husband, come on. Serve in the church, give, whatever it is that you're doing for God, whatever you're doing every day. He says, do all things without murmuring and complaining, that you could shine as the lights of God. Apparently, we're not shining as bright as we need to shine, come on, because not all men are coming to the kingdom yet. But how many know we can now because we're understanding? God spoke and he said this here. Ingratitude is a paralyzing force that ruins and destroys marriages. He said it destroys families. You see, a couple's going at it because they're not grateful. They forgot that loving feeling. Come on now, about what God had done and the gift that that person is. And because maybe we put on a few pounds. Or maybe because we're not everything that we were at one time before. But how many know there's other areas that we have grown in? And how many know there's other areas that we are a great blessing, but we can't see that? Come on. And, and, and here's what it said. Ingratitude is a paralyzing force that ruins and destroys marriages, families. You get it in a church, it will destroy a church. You get it in, listen, in a relationship, it will immobilize the entire thrust of the vision that the man and woman of God have. Ingratitude. Why do I have to sing that song? Why does it go so loud? Why, did he, did he, and why does he have to talk on that? Why does he have to preach on that? And why can't I be the one that's singing this here song? And why did they give that one in that and, 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 and why did they put that person on the board and not me on that board? You know what it is? It's a bunch of whiners. Come on now. And they're dining with the feast table of hell. But I don't believe that about River of Life. I believe that you're diners with the throne of God. I believe that you're tasting and seeing that God is good. Not once in a while. 
but all the time. I believe that your deliverance is here. I believe that he made you a head ministry, not a tail ministry. I believe your best is yet to come. I believe the atmosphere is going to be right for the miraculous of God to demonstrate, to show himself strong on behalf of the hearts of the men and women here. And I believe, and I'm hearing prophetically, that the words even spoken and decreed in times past, it's coming now to the culmination where those things will begin to unfold. Don't say I'm too old. Don't say it's too late. No, it's just starting to come to the surface today, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Now I'm getting ready to get started. Ingratitude is a spiritual plague that is highly contagious. And when it spreads, it infects every person it comes in contact with and releases and enforces a rebellious spirit. Ingratitude keeps you from praying. It keeps you from interceding. But most of all, it keeps you out of the will of God. And everybody said amen. Now listen, I'm a young guy. Amen. I'm a young guy. I want you to put up Psalm 100 for just a moment. And I want everybody to get this. Now, how many know this is one of the entry points from the front door into the sanctuary? Come on. How many know that's not an entry point? How many know if you come in the morning, you try coming in through that window, you're not going to do very well? There's something I'm saying right now. How many know there's another entry point right over there? How many know most of the people come from that entry point? Apparently, come on. Okay, so how many know what I'm using is an analogy right now? There's a proper way to enter. There's a door. There's, there's only one front door at my house. If you, you can't go into the garage, okay, because you don't have the code. But there's a thing. Now, let me ask a question while we're here for just a moment. Has anybody ever forgotten a password? How many have ever forgotten a password? Now, in that forgetting the password, how many had a little bit of frustration along with it? How many, when you forgot a password, were so frustrated you probably said some things that you're glad nobody else is around to hear? Now, anybody ever been there? Come on, we're not going to embarrass anybody. We're not, I mean, come on, we got to be real people. Okay? It's, there's a frustrating aspect of this. Now, before we even go to the message, if we can just put on the New King James, because we're going to come right back here to the, uh, to the Message Bible. But in Psalm, listen very carefully, 100. Everybody read this with me. Come on. Enter in, come on, into his gates with what? So how many know there's a proper way to enter and there's an improper way to enter? You know, the way most Christians that I've learned over the years come in, and, oh, God, you know, change that father, that wife of mine, change, change them people, and God, why can't they be on time, and why is this guy, and all this here, and it's like God just saying, will you get a life? You know, where are you, who do you think you are? Come on. And, and, and the Bible says, be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication. Then, come on, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Come on. And then God's peace will be there, not the anxiety. So God says clearly, he said, the entering point, the starting point of your day, the starting point of your walk with God, your starting point for everything you're going to do in the kingdom of God, he says, is with thanksgiving. And then he says, come on, and into his courts with praise. And then he says, be thankful to him. Come on, and bless his name. Go to the next verse, because we're going to come back in the message in a moment. Go to the next verse. One more down, okay? Verse number five, okay? It says, bless his name. And then it goes on, and it says, there it is. Come on, come on. For the Lord is good. You know why many Christians struggle with the revelation of that God is good? It's because they didn't enter in the right way. And then his faith, unfailing love, continues for how long? His faithfulness continues to each generation. Well, listen, listen. When we have the understanding of the good, of, of, the, of the gratefulness of God, and we come in the right way with God, we're going to see that God's good. We're going to see his unfailing love continue, and we're going to see his faithfulness to every generation. 
and turning over the church right now to the next generation, that's a highlight of our lives because this is the promise of God that's true. But go back now to verse number four in the Message Bible, and this is gonna, this is gonna help somebody here. So the word enter means to come in or go in, to be admitted to into a school of competition, to make a beginning. It's the initial state or the initial part of anything that goes on in our lives. Now look what the writer says. Come on. Enter with, come on, the password what? Make yourselves at home, talking praise, thank him, worship him. Isn't it amazing? God says, enter with the password. You want the password to the heart of God? It's not all the things you do for God. It's not all the prayers you do for God, all the fasting. Hey, listen, that positions you to hear the voice of God. But the reality is God's looking for one thing, an appreciative heart. And you know, in David's life, he actually found that. And the Bible says, the Bible says, I will. This is David speaking. There's one of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, of the 3,000, uh, over 3,418 uh, I wills in the Bible. Come on. He said, I will bless the Lord. Come on. At all times at all means in every occasion in every season and the word time speaks of every season every circumstance in life and, and he says i will bless the lord at all times and then he says his praise his celebration not once in a while shall continually be in my mouth let's go if we can for just a moment over here to Psalm 34. I want you guys to see this. This is probably going to be one of the last verses that I'm going to be able to quote to you over here. But you, you just need to read this because we're going to go through it. And when you see it, you're going to understand that the atmosphere David was under was an open heaven for the presence of God. And he tapped in to a divine atmosphere of the presence of God that no one that I know of even to this day has tapped in to what it is that David had so in Psalm 34 1 listen to this here uh, uh, okay everybody come on stand up for just a moment you got to see this together come on I will praise the Lord come on at all time the word praise means to thank God it's literally translated thank thanksgiving celebration I will constantly speak his praises now look at verse number two go right down we're going to keep going i will boast only in the lord let all who are helpless take heart look at verse number three this is powerful over here come let us it's not about me or you it's all of us tell of the lord's greatness let us exalt his name together look at verse number four come on to the lord and he answered me, and he freed me from all my fear. Why? Because the atmosphere of gratitude, it sanctified it for the purposes of God to be fulfilled. There's marriages that can be restored when you start appreciating. There's children that will come back home to the fold when you start showing appreciation and start zipping the mouth and start changing what's coming out of your mouth. You can be seated. Glory to God. I'll say it again. Glory to God. Psalm 75, 1, we give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works. Declare that your name is near. Psalm 92, 1, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Psalm 97, 12, rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his name. Psalm 105, 1, oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds amongst the people, sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of his wonderful works, glory to his holy name. It's amazing, and every reference that I just quoted, whenever thanks went, wondrous works were already done. In the same respects, wondrous works are going to be manifest in this house. Because the worship team, every leader, every greeter, every children's worker is going to come in with a grateful attitude that will sanctify the atmosphere for the miracles not to be hard or not to be seldom so that they can be done every time we get together. I want to close with two stories. One of them was a man, and his name was Daniel. And Daniel was in one of the most horrific circumstances 
the death penalty was right before him because they made a decree to bow down, come on, to their God. And he said, as his habit was, you can read the habit. I believe it's in Daniel 2.23. He was in the habit of praying and thanking God. But it says in the chapter 6, before the lion's den that he was thrown into, it said he did as it was his habit when he heard the report. He knelt down to the east, and as he knelt down, he began to thank, and he began to praise God. And as he did, guess what happened? The presence of God came on him so strong. The king felt like he had betrayed Daniel, and he had. And those men that had set them all up were all there. And they're all gloating now that Daniel's out of the way. But he had a habit of praying and a habit of thanking God that released the supernatural atmosphere for the presence of God to preserve him and to keep him in the troubles and the storms of life that he had entered into. How many believe that the same deliverance that Daniel had is the same delivering God in your life today that wants to do something major in your life? There's so many aspects that I can go on this, but I felt sensed in my prayer time for this service that the area that we needed to go in was the last area. And that's when Jesus, isn't it amazing, of all the things that the Apostle Paul could have spoken of by revelation in the desert. He said, in the night in which Jesus was betrayed. Isn't it amazing now that Paul now, of all the things that could have went on of the garden that night, of the betrayal that night of Judas, of, of, of all the things that could have went on, but it says, uh, the betrayal of Judas is the one that he brought, but all the other things that went on, Peter cut off the priest there, come on. The soldiers that came that all fell backwards were all slain in the spirit when they came. He could have talked about all those things, but the only thing he brought reference to was in the night in which he was betrayed. He took bread and he broke it and said, this is my body. Let me tell you something. Before he took bread, the first thing that he did was he gave thanks. Because he knew what was before him. He knew the sacrifice that was right around the corner. He knew what was going to go on the next day. He had read the prophets because it was all there. He had read what Isaiah the prophet had said, that he'd be beaten beyond recognition, that they would hardly even recognize that he was a man. And it focused back to the work of the cross. But notice what he did in the night in which he was betrayed. He took bread. And even in communion today, many believers don't understand the power that is in the bread. Because when we take communion, it literally means we are face to face with God. Look it up. It literally means the bread of his presence. It literally means face to face with God.